Now, when a brand new player starts RuneScape, they normally have no money, not much experience, and they progress through the early game at their own pace. Now, I've always wondered what the difference is between that and someone who has money to start with. Today, I'm going to try making a brand new RuneScape account and funding it with a good amount of money. Not like an obscene amount, not like a billion gold or something, but just 50 mil. And I want to see how far I can make it in just 24 hours. The goal for this is to try to get the highest total level possible while also completing some useful quests and leveling up some useful skills. Okay, brand new account has been made. What are we gonna name it? We're gonna name it a 24 hour lad. She's surprised that's available, nice. Now, the reason I chose 50 mil partly is because I didn't want to waste more money than that, but honestly, realistically, anything past this amount and you're kind of just burning money for no reason, there are definitely more expensive training methods than what I even am going to try in this video, but significant diminishing returns, so I wouldn't really say it's worthwhile. 50 mil is already quite a bit to blow just in 24 hours, but don't worry, we'll find a way. Now the first thing we're going to do here is buy a bunch of teleport items. We have no skills, we're literally level 3, which means getting around the map will be really annoying without these items. Now besides that, we're going to buy some items to perform a few training methods that we can do while we're running around. Mainly I'm looking at creating darts, which is a zero time fletching method, and enchanting bolts, which is a little more difficult, but should provide us with some really good magic experience somewhat passively. Oh my god. Okay, so our inventory is looking a little, a little messy, but we're gonna clear that up in a minute. So we spent about 5 mil so far, and the first thing we're gonna do is create a few arrow shafts just to level up our fletching enough that we can create a bronze dart. There we go, that is level 10 fletching, that's all we need from the arrow shafts for now, we can just bank those. And now we can start one ticking these darts whenever we run around, Gilinor completing quests or whatever. What? I'm so confused right now, what, did they change that? Okay, that's really annoying, uh, we're gonna have to look into this, but for now we're gonna start off with our very first quest. Now the idea here is we're gonna do quests for skills that are actually pretty slow to train in the beginning, but for everything else we're gonna try to find a really high experience per hour training method that will allow us to take advantage of our funding. Okay, so we're gonna do a bit of a pit stop here. We're in the middle of doing waterfall quests, but one thing we're definitely gonna to wanna to unlock is the dwarf multi-cannon. So although this detour took about 10 minutes, the dwarf cannon definitely gonna pay for itself in the time we're gonna save. And we'll go pick one up from the ground exchange now for about a mil, plus we'll buy some cannonballs. Okay, so I figured out the dart issue. Now it's actually a new default setting that will give darts a make X interface. We don't want that. Now we can make darts in one tick as we run places. That was going to make this so much easier. Thankfully, we figured that one out pretty early. So the idea is that as we finish quests that require us to run around, we can quickly spam these dart tips together and rapidly level up our fletching. Okay, we're doing this at 10 HP, so we could get one shot. So there we go, our first major quest is done with Waterfall Quest. We just gained 60 total levels just like that. By far the quickest way to level up our combat skills in the beginning, so we had to do that one first. Now one thing I really want to do early on is level up range with a cannon. I have a place in mind already, but before we do that I need to get a few hit points levels, otherwise I'm going to get smacked around with only 10 hit points, that's not really going to work. Now I'm definitely not a very efficient player, but I'm going to try my best here to try to do things as quickly as possible. Now fletching darts as you're running around is super easy. The bolt enchanting is a little bit weird. You can one tick it and sometimes if you time it right you will continue to run properly, other times you will stop running. Now whatever I'm trying to do is whenever I have a distance to run, I click far away, hold the space bar and just spam click the bolt enchant icon every single tick. If you do it right, you will gain magic experience at a very quick rate, but it's a little bit more difficult. So that is Witch's House done with, getting us all the way to 24 hit points and 153 total level already, and now we're a bit tankier. Okay, so we're gonna do some cannoning. Now, I'm not entirely sure how the cannon accuracy works. I'm pretty sure it's based on your highest combat stats accuracy. So because my range skill is so low, we're not even going to bother attacking. I'm going to buy some crossbows just to equip, which will hopefully get us a higher range accuracy and make our cannon more accurate. That's the idea anyway. Now as for my cannon location, I've decided on the giant pit in Zaya. A kind of newly added multi-combat pit where there are hill giants that you can cannon pretty easily. Okay, so we found a nice little safe spot here in the pit. We do still take some damage whenever we reload our cannon, but that's okay. Now, as the cannon is spinning, my initial thought was, hey, we might as well train our magic skill. We can one ticket, 
while we're here, but the cannon is so jank that if you one tick magic, it will freeze your cannon and it will just stop shooting entirely. It's so weird. The darts work fine, but if I try to enchant bolts, my cannon just freezes, which is unfortunate. That was my original plan. Instead though, I'll probably just try to create as many darts as possible, level up my fletching as much as I can while I'm here, because yeah, that's just not working. All right, already at 40 fletching just from making these steel darts. Now in theory, you could probably get 99 fletching if you wanted in this 24 hour period, but the cost would be so high. We're probably just gonna go for mid 50s or something like that. Beyond that, it just doesn't become efficient cost wise to train anymore, but it's still a huge amount of total levels for pretty much zero time. There is 31 ranged, which means we can now equip our steel crossbow, getting us an additional 36 ranged accuracy. Oh my god, I just missed it so quick, but there's 50 fletching already. We've been kind of weaving in some magic training as well. We're up to 23 magic, not a ton yet, but I think just unlocking a few teleports would be nice. So we just passed an hour and a half of game time. We're already up to 52 fletching and 35 ranged, but I think that's all we're going to do for now. I want to just make sure we can get at least some levels in every skill until we grind one much, much higher. So to kind of clear up our inventory here, we're going to take a minute and just enchant these lower level bolts. I'm finding it kind of difficult to do as we're running around, so we're just going to get rid of the lower level ones for now. Oh, it's so quick. There's 30 magic already. You can see the XP per hour we're getting here, nearly 200k per hour with pretty low level bolts still. This method is really, really good. It's very expensive though, so I wouldn't recommend doing it much past 50. But for now, there is 40 magic bringing us up to a total level of 233. Now, while we're in Varrock, I thought, well, we might as well do the Varrock Museum. There we go, that's just another 16 total levels for free, pretty much. So the next skill I wanna try to knock out, at least the early levels, is Prayer. Prayer is gonna be incredibly quick. Now, we kinda of balled out and bought 400 Dagonoth Bones. Those are very expensive. The 400 cost me 3.5 mil, but it should get us a ton of Prayer levels in just about 20 minutes or something. So to do this, we're just gonna enter someone else's POH. Pretty simple. My god, we literally got four prayer levels just from one Dagonoth Bone. You're gonna rip through the early levels. So we're getting about 900k per hour prayer experience right now. You can definitely get more, but still, it won't matter too much. We only have 400 bones to use anyway. But we already have Protect Melee just after a few minutes, and that's kind of why I did this in the beginning. Protection prayers are just gonna be good to have early on, but we're not even halfway through our bones yet. Okay, this is going to be the last level we're going to get from 400 Dagonoth Bones we got from level 1 to 55 Prayer in about 10 minutes. Just kind of ridiculous. So thanks to our funding, we slammed through a bunch of really easy levels. Now it's time to do a few more quests. First up, Doric's quest immediately got us to level 10 mining. No reason not to do it, it takes literally 10 seconds. That will lead us perfectly into the Knight Sword, which required the mining levels. But thanks to that, that got us to 29 smithing immediately, which is way quicker than just training the skill. Now next up here, we're going to do Tourist Trap. Now it's entirely for agility experience. Agility is just so slow in the beginning that doing this quest is legitimately quicker. Even though it's not the quickest quest, it'll take us 25 minutes or so. There we go, Tourist Trap is done, and we're going to take that experience and put it into agility twice, which will get us all the way up to 26 agility, which is amazing. That's a bunch more total levels. So with that little questing grind done with, it's now time to spend more money again. Now probably one of the most unique training methods we're going to take advantage of is planting bagged plants in our POH. This training method gives you an equal amount of construction and farming experience and is going to be the only way that we can realistically train farming, so I thought we might as well invest a good amount of money into these bagged plants. We're going to buy nearly 400 of the bag plant threes, which is a five mil investment. We're gonna start with that. We might buy more in the future, but they're quite costly. So that should, yeah, that'll be a good start. So it's really simple. We come to our POH in building mode. We need some watering cans and our bag plants in a spade. And all we do is build the plant and remove it, build it over and over again. All right, that's gonna be our final level with the bag plant ones. These ones are Pretty slow in comparison, but you know, it's really the only option here. There we go, that's 12 farming and construction done with. And now we can move on to the bag plant threes, which give a hundred of each. So we've just tripled our XP per hour. 
So we're getting about 72,000 experience in both farming and construction, so 150k per hour total. We're already up to 30 farming and 30 construction without ever having planted a conventional plant. So I think this is going to be our last level for now. We've gone all the way from one farming and construction to 40 in both, which means we just gained nearly 80 total levels from this. So definitely a worthwhile investment, but we're going to leave it at level 40 for now as getting it higher is just going to cost so much money and I don't want to accidentally run out of cash. That would be very unfortunate. Right now we're at the three and a half hour mark. Now, historically, leveling up runecrafting has been kind of slow, but thanks to the Temple of the Eye, getting the first 20 or 30 levels really quick now. So first up, Rune Mysteries, only doing that because, well, you kind of have to. The other precursor quest is Enter the Abyss, which actually gives us nine runecrafting levels, so we'll take that. For some reason, they made it so you don't quite get enough runecrafting experience from that. You have to do like one or two air rune runs or something. Kind of weird, but we did it. So the experience you get from Temple of the Eyes split up between the quest experience you get at the end as well as a significant amount during the actual quest. So I think we've already gotten to like 15 runecrafting, but there is our lump sum of 5,000 runecrafting experience which gets you all the way to 27. That's massive, that just saved us so much time. Okay, so another skill we haven't tackled yet is cooking. Cooking can be trained really quickly, so I'm going to shoot to get it at least to level 50, if not higher. Now the quickest training method right from level 1 is actually cooking carambuans. And you might be thinking, hey, don't you need a quest for that? True, but you can cook poisoned carambuans with zero quests, and you can do it right from level 1. Even though you're going to burn a lot of them or fail, I guess would be a better term. It's still way quicker than cooking shrimp, and you get the benefit of being able to one-tick them as well. Look how quickly those cooking levels are coming in. All right, so we did this all the way to 35 cooking, which is when we can start cooking wines. Wines is no brainer, the best way to go from here. And honestly, it's a really, really cheap training method as well. It probably only costs us a couple hundred K to get like 10,000 grapes. It's crazy. Thank you, Zalra. Okay, first six speed drop coming in directly to 39 cooking, nice. Okay, I had this crazy idea that I was gonna try to cannon somewhere while cooking wines. Um, didn't work out. Okay, yeah, there's a nice big XP drop coming in, 30k, bringing us to 49 cooking. We're just ripping through these early levels. We're gonna maybe go to 50 for now, but I think honestly we might even go further than that. Okay, so the next Bible on the menu is gonna be crafting. From level one, I think cutting opals might be the quickest. We're gonna give it a try. Besides that though, cutting gems like sapphires definitely will be the quickest once we can cut them. So we bought, I think, the exact amount of each gem to move on to the subsequent one. Except for opals, we have no idea because you can break them apparently. All right, there's 20 crafting. I will say that wasn't particularly quick. I'm not sure if that's actually better than just making leather items, but it doesn't matter. We've now moved on to sapphires, which is blazing quick compared to what I was just doing. All right, there is 35 crafting already. We've cut all our emeralds now. Now we can move on to our rubies, which should be enough to get us to, I think, mid 40s. Okay, this is gonna be our final level for sure. I calculated this, right? Okay, nice. So that brings us to 43 crafting, where we can now cut diamonds. Probably we'll do that at some point, but I think we're gonna leave our crafting at 43 for now. So we're gonna take a break to do a little bit of questing. The one we just finished up here is the Grand Tree. We're doing this partly because of the agility experience straight off the bat that will get us, I think seven or eight levels, uh, which is pretty good. But also we want access to a good chinning spot. And to do that, we need to start to Monkey Madness one. So there we go, Grand Tree done with. That gets us 32 agility and it looks like 38 attack. So like 15 total levels just from that quest. So there is 49 magic just from enchanting emerald bolts. Surprisingly expensive for the emeralds in particular. Now we can start enchanting ruby bolts, which is like three times cheaper and way quicker. So we'll definitely move on to that. I think my goal with magic is to try to get at least to 55 so we can get high alk, at which point we can, you know, slowly high alk things that was if you run around. Plus that's just a useful magic level to get anyway. We're gonna invest into 11,000 ruby bolts for 2.5 mil, kind of expensive because most of that money is getting completely torched but the speed at which we can level magic now is gonna be kind of insane i think we can get well over 200k per hour 
So for stuff like this Trino Maze, this is a really good time to train magic. We can just spam click as we run through the maze, except we ran out of run energy, damn it. Okay, that is Trino Village done with. Mainly did this for the prerequisite of Monkey Madness 1, but it's also going to get us, I think, three attack levels, which, you know, not bad. So our playtime right now is nearing six hours, so we're at about the one quarter mark. Okay, so I think it's time to tackle Herblore, a really quick, easy to train viable skill, greatly benefited by having lots of money. So we finished Riddick Ritual and now it's time to dump some money into Herblore. So, so far pretty cheap, we've just been making strength potions and we got all the way to 26 already. Now we're going to move on to the energy potion, which again shouldn't honestly be too expensive. That's going to be our final inventory of energy potions for now. We went all the way to 36 herb lore from that. We can now make the combat potion, which I think we might go for. It seems pretty cheap as well. So just like that, 45 herb lore just through combat potions. The early levels honestly aren't too bad, but we're still spending like 5 or 6 GP to XP, which does get very, very pricey over time. We're going to make another, I think, 400 attack potions, and we'll see where that leaves us off at. Okay, that's going to be the final level I think we're going to get for Herblore for now. That brought us all the way to 50, which we can now make the Fishing Potion, but I would never recommend doing that. Now, another easy one that we're going to knock out while we're here is Fire Making. To train Fire Making in the early levels, I would highly recommend buying the Gnomish Fire Lighter and loading it up with some colored Fire Lighter. You can only use this on regular logs, but what it will do is it'll give you a 100% chance of lighting it, which is not the case normally when you're starting from level 1, so it actually makes more sense to light regular logs all the way till I think 30, at which point you move on to like Willows or something. So there we go, 30 fire making already, we're just past the 6 hour mark now. 30 fire making is actually a pretty nice level because that allows us to now do sea slug. Which is the only viable way to level up your fishing if you're trying to be somewhat time efficient. So sea slug is honestly a massive quest that gets you from level 1 to 24 fishing which saves you a solid hour. Trust me, never fish shrimp ever again, it's just so so slow. Now, because we're in the area anyway, honestly, we might as well just do the fight arena quest. The main reason to do this is honestly just for the thieving experience. We are going to get maybe an attack level or two, but more importantly, it'll get us from level 1 to 14 thieving. Well, another quest we might as well do just because we are literally right there, Monk's Friend, which is I think a quicker way to level up woodcutting than just chopping normal logs and you get this dope dance party. So that gets us from level 1 to 13 woodcutting just like that and we're already up to over 700 total level. So we did run out of darts earlier so we're going to invest now into 20,000 mithril darts which I think is honestly all the fletching training that I really want to bank. That's like another 2 mil down the drain so we don't really want to go too hard at fletching but just because it's essentially a zero time method I think it's probably worth the investment. Okay, so we're back here at Hill Giants and we're going to go ahead and do a little bit more cannoning. While we do this, we're going to try to fletch all 20,000 mithril darts. And the goal here is to stay until we get 45 ranged, which will allow us to then wield a chinchampa. Okay, so that is going to be 40 ranged, getting there. Plus we made it through over 10,000 mithril darts, which is pretty impressive. So we've been slowly working our way through all of these darts and just like that, 60 fletching, probably going to be one of our highest level skills from this entire challenge, but by far the quickest. We're getting well over 400k per hour fletching experience. We'll be going through the rest of the darts of course, but that is probably the last major level we're going to get. Okay, so we're done with all of the darts finally, but more important than that, 45 range, which means we can now equip the Great Chinchampa. I'm not sure how good the Great Chinchampas are at this range level. I've heard not so great, but I think I'm going to give them a try. Our playtime right now is at around 8 hours, and our total level nearly 800. So we're going to buy some regular chinchampas. They're kind of a ripoff because red chinchampas are almost the same cost. We're going to start with just 2,000 for now and see how that goes. Now to go with it, we need to buy some essentially pure ranged gear because we have one defense right now. Might be a problem, but right now we're just going to try to prioritize our prayer bonus anyway. We can always sell some of the stuff back if we need to. Now thanks to the fact that we've already done to precursor quests, we only have to get to Apatol and then we've unlocked a really... went the wrong way. 
Okay, so like I was saying, we only need to unlock Abatol. We don't have to finish Monkey Madness 1, which is good because that would be quite a big time sink just to finish the quest. Now, I'm a little concerned about our accuracy right now against the zombie monkeys. We don't have a Sal of Amulet. We have essentially no range gear on. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. So the idea is we stack the monkeys up in a large area like this and the zombie monkeys will respawn from the bones of their dead bodies. A little morbid. Now my accuracy against these things is kind of low right now. Like I don't think I'm getting a higher XP rate than even the cannon which means might not be worth it at this point. We might have to get some defense levels first so we can get some actual ranged gear and maybe get our range level a bit higher before we try this because Right now, it kind of feels like I'm wasting my time. Okay, so we're going to try a new spot here and also buy a Robin Hood hat. Maybe that'll help us out. Some green dehyde chaps, because I forgot you can wear those at zero defense for some reason. And we're going to switch locations. We're going to try chinning at Temple Spiders, which hopefully should have lower defenses and require less accuracy to do it effectively. Okay, this is definitely better. Now, the spawn rates of the spiders is much worse. Like, there's less of them overall, but I am way more accurate. Now, what's really nice about chinning is you have the option of training on defensive mode, which means you will get an equal amount of defense experience as you do ranged experience, which means we can whip through some early defense levels really, really quickly. The only issue with this is your attack speed is lowered, which means your overall XP rate is less, but this is definitely the quickest way to train your defense, at least once our range level is a bit higher. Another nice thing about this method is we're getting tons of hit points experience as well. Hit points is an underrated way we're going to get even more total levels and chinning definitely gets you some of the highest hit points experience in the game. Right now we're only getting about 125,000 range experience per hour but that will go up a lot once we get red chinchampas and move on to our better actual chinning spot. But honestly still getting about double what we were from the cannon and we're already up to 53 ranged and we might just have enough chinchampas to make it to 55. Oh, it was very, very close, and we had to switch over to Rapid. But there we go, that is going to be 55 ranged, which means we'll now be able to equip the Red Chinchampa. I decided not to focus on defense to start with. We're only 10 defense right now, but once we get higher range levels, we can swap over to defensive casting, and I think that'll be more efficient that way. Okay, so we're gonna buy ourselves some armor and of course the Red Chinchampa, which is literally the same cost. We're gonna buy 4,000 of them for now. That will be about another four or five mil investment. I'm hoping at this point with the Red Chinchampas and some slightly better gear, we should be accurate enough to chin in the Apatol dungeon, but we'll have to test it still. Okay, so it's certainly better, but you can see I'm still reasonably inaccurate. And the way that this kind of works here is you need to kill the monkeys quickly, get the bones to drop on the ground so they respawn. So you can get a big stack of these skeleton monkeys. If you're not killing them quickly enough, your XP rate is greatly reduced. We just actually hit 30 defense though, so we are still ripping through those levels pretty quickly. But honestly, right now our XP rate is still not great. So we need to level up our thieving a little bit. So what we're doing here is a combo with thieving and magic training method. We're able to cast Bolt Enchant three times every time we steal from the bread stall, which means we're leveling up our magic really, really quickly still, while still getting pretty much the highest thieving experience rate we can. Now the reason we're training thieving is simply so we can do the dig site quest. The dig site gives like 15,000 mining experience, which is way, way quicker than just mining things by hand. Not my favorite quest, a bit time consuming, but I think it will be worth it. Okay, so that's actually a nice level, 55 magic. We got this all while trying to get 25 thieving, which we're almost hit that as well. There we go, 25 thieving, 55 magic. That was a very efficient half an hour of combo training. And thanks to that, we can now do dig site. Pretty lame quest, but that's okay. We got 15,000 mining experience for that, bringing us from level 10 to 32. That's a massive jump. Probably won't do any other mining training after that as well. It's just too slow. Now, carrying on with the questing train here, we're going to do Romeo and Juliet. We're doing it for the quest points because we want to get into the Champions Guild so we can do Dragon Slayer 1. It's not the quickest quest, but it will get us a bunch of defense experience as well as some other combat experience, which will, I think, be quicker than just training it manually. Now, the goal here is to get 40 defense so that we can equip dehyde bodies and dehyde shields because right now we're using a leather body while we're chinning, which is not effective at all. Okay, there we go. Dragon Slayer 1's done with. From it, we're going to get 18,000 defense and strength experience, which gets us all the way to 38 defense and 38 strength and 843 total level, which is massive. 
Now we finished off the last couple levels at the red spiders on Zaya. Finally, 40 defense, which means we can equip the blue dehyde body, the blue dehyde shield. And with that, I think we should finally be able to chin somewhat effectively. Okay, so that is definitely an improvement. We're now up to 225,000 range experience per hour, and we just hit 60 range, which means we can now equip red dehyde bodies, the red dehyde chaps, shield, and van braces as well. And now the range training is definitely picking up. So we finished off the rest of our chinchampas on defensive mode. You can see we're getting about 70,000 experience per hour in defense, which is pretty quick. Not to mention we're getting the same amount in ranged as well. The last of the chinchampas brought us up to 44 defense. Now smithing is another skill we haven't leveled up too much yet. Anvil smithing is actually reasonably quick and we went all the way to 40 smithing just by crafting iron plate bodies and that's just another 10 total levels just like that. Now looking at the skills here that are still reasonably low level, woodcutting is one that is only level 13. We can definitely level that up a fair bit. Not to mention forestry has just come out which is a really quick way to level up the skill in the early levels. Okay, there's 25 wood cutting just from chopping oak trees. We want to move over to willows as soon as possible so we can fully take advantage of forestry. Okay, another big level coming in here, 40 fire making just from burning teak logs. Really, really quick. That only took us a few minutes. Right now we are at the 13 hour mark. So just over halfway and we're nearly at 900 total. So quick, actually. <laughs> So right now there's two elephants in the room for skills that are very under leveled. We have Slayer and Hunter. Now Slayer is kind of an interesting one and it will very much depend on the tasks we get assigned. We got Cave Bugs from Vanica, but then I kind of realized that I should probably do Wilderness Slayer. You get much better assignments early on. Except now we have to kill Cave Bugs, damn it. Oh, Ice Giants. Oh man, that's no good either. So with a cannon, Slayer is at least reasonably quick to train in the beginning. Those first two tasks got us all the way to 18 Slayer, but anything past that, we definitely need to get a better task, one that's not in the Asgardian Ice Dungeon, goddammit. So we're gonna grab a Wildy task from Crystalia, hoping for something not too dangerous, but also high hit points. Scorpion's okay, that'll be quick at least. Bandits, okay, that's actually a really good one. Shouldn't be too dangerous, and there's a giant pile of bandits. All we have to do is plop a cannon down. Hey, there's even a cannon spot recommendation. We'll take it. Now, what's nice is there's some high-level bandits here as well, which should get us a good amount of Slayer experience, alongside a lot of lower-level ones as well, but there's a multi-combat area, which means our cannon will go nuts, and we should get a lot of Slayer levels. Okay, we're just approaching 25 Slayer. We're getting 30k XP per hour, which is really good, considering our combat level and Slayer level, but there's 25. Look at that, perfectly 30 Slayer with the exact last kill of the task. That will do for now. We might do more Slayer in the future, but I just wanted to get it at least past level nine, you know? Now there is one final low level skill that we have to level up. And unfortunately, there's really no way to train it quickly in the early game. And that would be Hunter. I'm even finishing X marks the spot just to get 300 Hunter experience because I think that's legitimately quicker. I have no idea what the best low level Hunter training is besides Fossil Island. Normally people will do birdhouse runs, but I think completing Fossil Island will take too long, so we're gonna have to find something else. Okay, so we opted for Feldib Weasels. I've actually never done this before. It's really not that quick, but at least it is consistent. Beats messing around with bird traps, that's for sure. Okay, there is 12 Hunter. That's all we're gonna do for now. We can now... What is going on? We can now use a Hunter Potion to boost to catch Ruby Harvest, which are butterflies, and these are way, way quicker. So what we can do is we can actually lay down a bird trap here, just in case one of these birds randomly decides to trap itself, but mainly we're focused on catching these Ruby Harvests. They don't get a lot of experience, but they are way quicker to catch, and in combination with our bird snares, should bring us a decent experience rate of maybe 12 to 15k per hour. It's not great. Here we go, 20 Hunter. We can now place down two traps, which should increase our XP rate a little bit, but it's still pretty slow. Okay, 25 I think is all I'm gonna go for for now. I might go a bit higher after, but Hunter is unfortunately just one of those really slow skills in the beginning. I'm only getting about 12,000 experience per hour, which seems not like the best use of my time to go much further than this. We still have a lot of money left to spend, and I thought we might as well level up a few more of our viable skills further, because now I know I have the time for it. We're going to buy ourselves a bunch of uncut diamonds, which should be a really, really quick crafting training method, albeit kind of expensive. 
but we have the money. So we're in the process of cutting 480 diamonds and we're already at level 50 crafting. Diamonds give you nearly 300k per hour crafting experience starting from level 43, so it's incredibly quick. And just like that, 60 crafting. We just gained a ton of total levels and that only took about half an hour, so definitely worth it. Oh man, there's still tons of people here. So forestry is something I wanted to try on this speed account because I think it is a really, really quick way to level up woodcutting now in the early levels. Now what's nice about forestry is the events give you a lot of experience per hour on top of just regularly chopping trees. So I think the XP rate has gone up, I wanna say nearly double in the early game, which is actually an insane buff. For example, here we have the mulch event and each time I put in the right combination, I'm getting 118 woodcutting experience, which is honestly just a ton. Plus we're gonna get a lump sum of experience after. Just from that first event, we just got immediately to 30 woodcutting, which means we can now chop these willow trees. Another mulch event done with, and that's gonna be 35 woodcutting. We're getting about 50k per hour right now, which is pretty damn good considering I started at like 25 woodcutting. Okay, but that final log chop, that is gonna bring us to 40 woodcutting. Forestry, Definitely made this a lot quicker. I don't think I should go past 40 though. Overall woodcutting is not super quick in the early game. And right now we're actually getting pretty close to base 30s. Uh, I think we might get that. So I think cooking is another skill I think we could get a bit higher. Thanks to wines you can get nearly 500k per hour. So I think we should try to push it a bit further. So we crafted wines for only about 20 minutes and we just got all the way to 60 cooking. And if you look at our total level, we're actually so close now to a thousand. I wasn't sure if we'd breach the 1000 total mark, but I think we're definitely going to do it. Unless we tectonically fucked this up somehow. Fishing is a skill that we haven't really leveled up much. We're fishing trout here, which is a okay option. We're at 30 fishing already, which means we can catch salmon. Yeah, even with salmons, this isn't particularly quick. That's going to be 35 fishing, and I think that's where I'm going to stop, definitely. Okay, didn't expect this, but rune crafting, I think, is actually the next easiest total level we can get here. We're at 29 rune crafting now, and although it's still not a particularly quick skill, thanks to Guardians of the Rift, I think getting to 35 is pretty reasonable, only take us a couple of games, and might just push us past that 1000 total level mark. Oh, there it is guys, 35 rune crafting, but more important than that, 1000 total in under 24 hours, actually probably closer to 19 hours. So that was my original kind of internal goal done with, but there's definitely more levels we can get here. For example, uh, we got some money left over, we still got like 15 mil, and I think I might just invest it into more bagged plants. If we buy another 650 of them, we should be able to get, I think another 10 total levels from that, just for a measly 7 mil investment. Okay, so we went through all of those, all the money is gone with, our 7 mil has been thrown into Narnia, but that brought us all the way to 50 farming and 50 construction, which is really just massive levels for both of them. The fact that you can get both those skills to 50 in under 24 hours without actually having to plant any trees is pretty nice if you got the money for it anyway. So we decided to do a bit of a fire making grind. We burned teak logs until 45 and then maple logs to 50 fire making. 50 is a nice good round number. We're halfway to 99 of course. Okay, so we still had a fair number of chinchampas in the bank and we decided we're gonna throw all of these on defensive mode. Sure, it is slower experience rate per hour, but the XP per chin is the same and our defense level is much lower than our range level, so I think we're gonna get more total levels by training on defense. Okay, so that was very close, we didn't really calculate this at all, but we just reached 50 defense and we are pretty much all out of chinchampas now. Now one quest I kind of forgot about, but actually might be a, an easy way to get some total levels is the feud. Uh, to do that we needed to get 30 thieving to begin with, which we just did it. Now the feud is not the quickest quest, but it gives a ton of thieving experience, so I think it is still worth our time at this point. So we're getting close to just having two hours left, but we finished up the feud, and that is going to get us seven total levels from that. Boom. 37 thieving, and just another quest done with for the account if we use it in the future. We're back at these butterflies again. I honestly couldn't think of a better way to get easy total levels, even though Hunter is pretty slow. We decided to just tough it out here till 30. And what's kind of notable about that level is we now have base 30s and all our stats and actually pretty close to base 40s. If you don't include agility, fishing, thieving, 
Hunter, Slayer, Runecrafting. Okay, maybe we're not that close. So this is going to be our last major investment. We're going to buy 500 Dragon Bones to really just kind of top off our prayer level. There is 60 prayer, which is actually quite nice. We unlock Chivalry. And that's brought us to 1057 total with only about an hour and a half left. Now to finish off this hour, I'm just going to do something very chill. We're just going to AFK some sand crabs. Honestly, our melee combat stats could be leveled up a bit higher. We don't have much time left, just north of an hour, but we'll just kind of chill here for the last hour and see how far we get. All right, this is going to be our final level. I'm pretty sure we only have 10 minutes left. But with this final strength level, we're going to end the challenge off at 1066 total, which is definitely a bit higher than I expected. We started off with 50 mil and after selling all our kind of random junk left, we have about 15 mil left. So we spent about two thirds of it. So overall, pretty happy with how the 24 hours went. I think there is some room for improvement. You could probably push 1100, even maybe 1200 if you were really playing efficiently. But for someone who's kind of average, average player, I think this is actually pretty reasonable. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Now before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Alejandra, Mitch Reinders, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. I do really appreciate it. Also thank you to Kapersky, YoYoSub89, and NDM0001 for being subscribed at the Runite Tier. Thanks everyone again, and I'll see you next time.